Hello student. So let us start our discussion. In previous video, we have discussed what is UART and uh, how communication will take place using UART. So in this video, uh, we will try to discuss modes of transfer means how CPU will transfer the data uh, from uh, IO device to memory or IO device to CPU. Now we are having three approach to perform the transfer or we can say there are three modes. The first mode is uh, programmed I.O. Next is interrupt initiated I.O. And third mode is DMA, direct memory access. So in this tutorial, we will try to discuss what is programmed I.O. Now uh, in programmed I.O, first of all, let us try to understand the configuration or arrangement of the uh, element. So this is CPU this is interface and this is input output device clear so uh, let us uh, understand that how the computer or cpu will perform the program dio so to perform the program dio uh, cpu will uh, initialize the interface and then via interface data will be sent to io uh, let's output device okay but how it will uh, perform the input operation so let us try to understand that how it will be done here there will be io device if you try to recall the uh, asynchronous uh, data transfer using handshaking okay then uh, destination initiated uh, uh, data transfer okay so here uh, how it will work io device means uh, let's say input device will put data on input bus data bus okay so after putting the data it will send the data valid signal okay so first it will place data into io bus then it will enable the data valid okay and uh, after, as soon as interface will receive data valid okay what interface will do interface will uh, start reading from the data bus and it will and it will acknowledge with the data accepted so uh, then after reading data it will place the data into the data register okay and set the value of status register or flag to one okay after setting the value of list flag to one it will uh, invalidate the data accepted okay means it will uh, disable the data accepted so io device will know that uh, interface has properly read the data and uh, then uh, it will continue with the next cycle now how cpu will read the data from this so uh, first of all uh, cpu will uh, read the data register okay uh, then it will check the flag okay and after checking the flag means whether the value of flag is 0 or 1 means data is available or not it will uh, read the status of register so what is the status of register the status of register represent that data which is received by the uh, interface register whether it is available into this register or not okay means it is available for data transfer or not so uh, this status represent the uh, um, status of uh, register okay so uh, what is need of this status register so program uh, means it is uh, used to check the flag in the status register to determine if uh, byte has been placed in uh, uh, data register uh, by the io device or not okay this is done by reading the status register into the cpu okay so cpu will not directly transfer the data but it will read the status register okay and if the value of this flag is one means data is placed into the data register okay then cpu will transfer this 8 bit uh, into the memory or into the cpu and then again it will set the value of this flag to uh, zero so it depends on the type of the implementation okay so uh, the transfer of each byte require uh, three instruction okay the first instruction is read the status register second check the status of the flag bit and branch to step one 
okay uh, means uh, if not set if it is uh, set okay then step number three and uh, what is step number three read the data register okay so if we look at the flow chart then how it will look read the data register check the flag bit whether the value of flag is zero oh, okay so if it is zero then nothing will be done okay but if it is uh, one then uh, read status register means this then uh, transfer the data if a value of flag is one and then operation is complete if operation is not complete means let's uh, means let's say we want to read 55 characters so it will be counter will be decremented and uh, then 54 so it will go to this cycle again read the data register so whether data is available or not okay then uh, check the flag bit so uh, flag is uh, set or not okay this data will be this data register means uh, data which is transferred by our device means our device has placed data into the data register or not so uh, then check the flag bit after reading the data register check the flag bit value of flag is one if it is one then read the status bit okay so then if uh, the data is available into data register then transfer the data to the memory and uh, then again it will check whether operation is complete or not okay so if operation is not complete then again it will go to this cycle so read the data register uh, which is uh, provided by uh, let's say input device then check the flag bit whether it is 0 or 1 if it is 0 then again it will go to the read data register flag bit 0 then again go to the data register means it will enter into the cycle till uh, input device does not provide any in, uh, input so if the value of flag is 1 then read the status register by reading the status it will determine whether um, data is available or not so if it is available means flag is 1 then transfer the data into the uh, memory cpu memory okay and once the operation is over then cpu can continue with the normal execution now here uh, this is the uh, this approach can be useful with very low speed devices okay and this cannot be used uh, with the high speed device let's say uh, if we are using the normal computer which we are using nowadays okay that in in those computer we cannot go with the program dia why because here cpu will waste its most of time in checking this flag which is uh, which can be utilized to execute some other instruction okay so this program dia approach is not uh, good for uh, implementing with normal computer okay this can be used uh, with uh, device uh, or it can be used when cpu uh, is assigned a task uh, assigned a task to monitor a device constantly so what is the another approach that is interrupt initiated io so let us try to understand that what is interrupt initiated io it is same as this okay but the only difference is that uh, here uh, cpu will continue its task previously in program dio cpu was uh, busy in this cycle checking the flag okay but in case of interrupt initiated io uh, cpu will continue with normal execution so cpu will continue with execution so that the time which was uh, wasted uh, in checking the flag it will be utilized properly uh, so how input output operation will be performed so for input output operation uh, cpu will uh, initialize the interface and whenever uh, there will be a data transfer or uh, whenever any device is ready for transferring the data okay so at that time uh, it will generate the interrupt so momentarily cpu will uh, pause the uh, execution which is it doing right now okay and it will try to manage the uh, request okay so after pausing it it will handle the request of input output device now cpu respond to the interrupt signal by storing the return address so whatever cpu is doing right now it will store the uh, that current content into some memory location okay and 
then it will uh, start with the then it will start with the interrupt routine okay so the way processor choose the branch address of the service routine mm, it uh, we can be uh, it can be divided into two part okay so let's say if there is any um, interrupt okay cpu is storing everything into the memory and then cpu will try to uh, then cpu will manage the interrupt okay so uh, the way it will manage the interrupt uh, it can be categorized into two category vectored interrupt and non vectored interrupt so what is vectored interrupt and what is non vectored interrupt in non vectored interrupt the subroutine of the device will be on a fixed predefined memory location okay and uh, what is vector interrupt so here device will provide vector address vector address or you can say interrupt address interrupt routine address okay so which will be uh, used by cpu to manage the request of a particular device so there can be two type of interrupt vector interrupt and non vector interrupt in non vector interrupt uh, we will have a fixed uh, location in memory okay and uh, uh, in uh, uh, vector interrupt the source that interrupt supplies the branch information means it will provide us a uh, vector address or you can say interrupt address so it is known as a uh, vector interrupt now io routine so um gradually what happens that uh, larger number of peripherals are being attached with the op, uh, you can say system so uh, the module or the implementation or you can say routine of all these devices are provided in form of modules in operating system okay so these modules specify the input output routine so whenever there will be any uh, input output request okay then uh, uh, address of uh, or that routine or that module will be loaded into the main memory and the instruction uh, are executed uh, which are required for uh, uh, handling that uh, request okay here uh, uh, this kind of operation will be performed by dma direct memory access okay so uh, that we will discuss in near future and uh, in this video we will keep up to this in next video we will see that how cpu will handle the uh, priority interrupt okay so let's say it will be it will happen that whenever we will have multiple input output device then if there is a, if there are simultaneous request from more than one device then uh, how it will be managed by cpu so that we will discuss in uh, next tutorial so in this tutorial we will keep up to this thank you